Ladies and gentlemen, we are back to give an official review for Constellation, Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, we've gone through every single episode from the beginning, but this is a special session where we're going to be talking about an amalgam of seven and eight. I guess actually it's perfect symmetry from how the show lines up, <laughs> existing in two different places. And we're going to try to work it out together. I have my co-host here, Vanessa. What's going on, Vanessa? Hi. Um, well, the last scene of that show just, bro I think, broke my mind a little bit. I don't know what's going on. I still don't know what's going on. I need to figure it out. I need to re I need to watch it over again because that was wild. Yeah. One thing that I realized really quickly is that this is maybe one of the most inventive multiversal sci-fi shows that I've seen in a long time. I think when we were watching Seven, I was like, man, this is like Stranger Things on steroids. Like, it's so many different puzzle pieces that they had to put together to make it all make sense. But it all technically makes sense, but there's still so many questions um, that that is, you know, that's, that's the art of how they cultivated this series. And I think that they did an amazing job. One thing I can just mm -hmm. say effectively that from start to finish, it was worth it. There was never a moment that wasn't like wasted. Even moments I thought were wasted, stupid moments, they paid tribute to them later on. Specifically mm -hmm. with the character Alice. I think at the end of the day, Alice is one of the most interesting characters, uh, young characters that they've used in um, on the Silver Spring in a really long time. And shout out to both actresses that play the role of Alice uh, because she had a lot to do in seven and eight. Um, a lot of heavy lifting as well with Nomi. But yeah, we can go ahead and unpack. You got any uh, thoughts before we get into this? No, I agree with you. I think the actors who, was, who played Alice, both Alice's were definitely the MVPs of the series. I think that like sh just everything that she was doing, she figured things out really quickly, was getting things moving along because like the adults are too busy like ah, running around screaming like chickens with their heads cut off. So I really appreciated like the focus that we got on her and her kind of figuring things out yeah man no. was that in yeah um but yeah i guess we can kind of pivot to where we left off because seven basically catches us up to where one began like one was a lot of different threads and i think that it was perfect that all those puzzle pieces that we didn't know in between time different gaps of like Okay, why is she just leaving the cabinet? Why is she leaving the daughter there? Why is the daughter in the bathtub and all of a sudden she's not? Is she in the marriage? Is she sitting there? We don't know. Well, this episode in episode seven, we get to fully unpack what is actually happening. So we get the understanding that <coughs> initially she goes out to the outside because they both were having a good conversation about what they were hearing. And they finally were communicating about it. But all of a sudden, in the midst of it, they were talking about, I think it was something on the the little headset where she heard something that scared her, that Joe got afraid of, and she was like, "I need, I need to, I, we we can just go back the way it was." And like, Alice was kind of like, "No, mom, we we need to deal with this. We need to face this together." And in that same exact moment, the other Alice, we already know, she ran away from her dad, and she's looking for her mom. She hears her. And so it mm -hmm. lines up back. And I think, honestly, a good pivot of episode seven is just lining up all those different blocks. And I think that, honestly, I don't know if you agree, but how did you think about the editing uh, and the repurposing of content between what we've seen mm -hmm. up until this point? I don't know. Did you want to comment on that? Yeah, I liked it in previous episodes. I did think it got started getting confusing and a little clunky in episode seven. Like, I we were catching up to where we were and then i was like it felt like by the like halfway through the episode i was like oh we're finally caught up to mm -hmm. where we were and then i was like okay let's keep it moving. like it just felt like a lot of time was wasted showing us exactly how we got to this very specific point and like i get we, i got it like and because they were showing that like in the previous episodes like very cleverly but they were moving the ep like the story along this one felt like episode seven felt like it kind of got bogged down a little bit too much in showing us exactly the very steps that got us to this point and while i appreciated that i was just like let's go let's keep it moving like and finally <laughs> it was finally like um it was good to finally hear both alice and and um joe say out loud that, like 
they're not technically related. I mean, they right. are, but they're You're not. not my mom. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I thought that was, um, I was like, finally, we can get the story kind of moving. And we do get some interesting other perspectives, obviously, that we didn't get from the original time we saw it. We get, um, we now see that the, the cops and Magnus and everybody is all after Joe because she, you know, from their perspective, attacked Magnus and then took off with her daughter while they're, she's experiencing um, some sort of mental break or psychosis. So like, there's just like that whole thing. And then um, that's what's so was interesting. Cause like Henry was like, yeah, I've been through this before. So I thought that that was cool to at least know that there's other people who have been go- dealing with this and that it's not just Joe going through it, but it, the whole Bud Henry situation. Yeah. Gets wild, yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, that's actually going to be the next pivot because, I mean, we do get caught back up to where we were at, where they both are going out to the river, like Joe and Alice, the Alice of this present universe, not her universe. And they're going out to try to search for the other Alice. And then they kind of make their way towards the cabin. And at that same as that time, the other Alice is kind of doing the same as that thing, heading darting towards the same as that cabin. So when we get back full force, we go and see, like you said, Magnus, and they are trying to figure out what's going on. And Henry was like, I've experienced this before. Like, this is something here. And it's, it's weird because the whole entire show, I've kind of looked at Henry as, you know, he's being haunted by Bud. Mm-hmm. Like, he's mm-hmm. the victim. But on paper, honestly, he stole Bud's life. <laughs> And it's kind but of just did like, he? because well, they didn't have a the choice. Thing. They're stuck he there. Didn't. He didn't. But at the end of the day, he knew that the other bud existed in a different plane of reality, but he chose to kind of just cover it up. And so mm-hmm. at the end of the day, he's still guilty because he didn't try to make a point to try to get the other bud back to his universe. I do think that he definitely was trying to figure out how it happened so he could maybe replicate it in some way with the cow. But ultimately, he he is at fault in in a sense. And there's a moment in the episode where he's getting close to the cow, it's activating, and they swap. Henry and Bud swap. And (laughs) from that point, that's where things get insane to me because that hasn't happened yet to anybody else. Like they've they've interacted, but they officially swap back. And I was going to mm-hmm. ask you, from a scientific standpoint, what, how, and why? What was the reason that they officially swapped back, in your perspective? Um, I don't know. I, well, I don't think this is Henry's fault. I don't think it's Henry. I think, a, I'm not going to sympathize as a serial killer because that's what Bud is a freaking serial killer. He is He's absolutely a, a psychopath, um, right? But I think that I, I'm not sure what happened. It was like he got close to it, and then. I think because he, and I think this is the same thing that was happening with Alice. It was. Is that they were getting close to it and they were swapping back and forth. And because they're the only ones, Henry, or the Caldera dudes and Alice's are the only ones with counterparts that are still alive. I think that's oh. why they're able to, when they get near the cow, they're able to swap, which is why Bud destroyed the cow so that it, they wouldn't have the ability to swap again. That's why I think he did that. Um, but I think there's the reason why they're able to swap easily is because they're the only ones with counterparts that are still alive. That's what it seemed like. I don't know. And because he was near the cow, it was the first time he had been near the cow. The last time he was able to swap where he like, they, it was because he was near the cow. He was activating the cow. That's what made it easier. So I don't know. I don't think it was obviously planned, but because when he got near, he it, like we saw how, like it was just how it was distorted that they ended up swapping he was and then he destroyed it he made sure to destroy it he did so that it, he, it wouldn't happen again and that's why i was like why is he doing that and then it clicked i was like oh he's he he's taking his back. life he he doesn't want to swap yeah. back he wants his life back because he's he said he was going to blow up henry's life and he did because now he's stuck in a reality with a, a deal with crimes he never committed so I don't know if I don't know if I'm gonna be able to read this correctly, but I think that this has something to do with it. Um, in metaphysics, intrability 
is the name given to the quality of matter whereby two bodies cannot occupy the same space at time. The thing that I was thinking about is because you've got Alice and Alice occupying literally the same exact space at the same exact time, there has to be a disruption that's causing more push and elevation to the cow because then you have Joe there and you also have um, Henry there. So I think maybe that was kind of the flood that kind of happened because at the same time, you remember, I think Joe, st her head started kind of splitting as well when she got back into the other cabin and the same mm -hmm. exact thing happened to Henry and that was when he flipped. The difference mm -hmm. is, of course, you know, Joe, well, well we're going to talk about that. Joe's body, <laughs> her other body, yeah. technically is dead and is not occupying that specific space. But I really feel like because Alice was flip-flopping at the same exact time, it all was coming to a push um, from what, what was going on with the cow. I really think that that had a big effect on it. And not just that them all being at the same exact time, same exact place around each other, I think it's got to be laying effect. The only thing that they still haven't answered is why is Alice affected? Exactly. How? We still don't know why. Mm -hmm. How How is she affected? Because the only, I can understand I have a the theory, baby, but good. Mm -hmm. I have a theory based on because the iPad was left up there on um, both and the reason the, the in both realities the iPad was left up there in certain circumstances you are able to hear both reality record recordings of both realities if you're either near the cow or in or in a in between place like when we in the previous episode when they went on the boat and they were able to hear certain things when you when they're able to hear the recordings and and like the in between places so I'm wondering if remember you can you don't need the cow to hear those recordings. You just have to be in certain places. Remember, they went on the boat in the previous episode. Yeah. So I'm thinking, my theory is that some sort of something about the iPad and the recording, the fact that she she recorded her voice, that thing's playing up there over and over again. I think that's tethering them somehow. I think the last time, because they were communicating right when the accident happened, yep. I think that's yep. what connected them. Because she said yeah. she says in the recording, we hear it two times in this, and two times in episode eight, which we'll talk about. You're my heart. I will always be with you. I think that's how, that's how they're staying connected. That's how Alice is affected too, because a mother's love is so strong. Like blah blah blah. I think that some has some. That's my theory. That some that has something to do with it because they explicitly don't explain why Alice is affected too. She never went up into space. Why can she also? And it's not genetic because Wendy, Paul's daughter, isn't experiencing it either. So that is why I'm like it's it's interesting. I think it's because of that. There's something, it's like mag mag electromagnetic waves, radio waves, whatever, something that's the same thing with the, the recordings. I think it's affecting that. So first episode, I think you're, you're on it. And I'm going to add to that. This is this, this gets fun. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the first episode, she was FaceTiming with her mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even though technically she wasn't physically in space, she her was. Voice and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like she yeah. actually was when everything went down when the disruption happened when the collision happened she was talking to her mom both of so them it, at the same time yep mm -hmm. so i think that is why i think it, it, mm -hmm. we initially were kind of like it's gotta be genetic like it's gotta be they have to be physically up there but like no because she was interfacing up there she technically wasn't physically there but she was um mm -hmm. that's how she was affected and yep. that's nuts <laughs> that's freaking nuts so if, which if is very crazy Paul had been talking to his daughter through facetime at the same that time facetime same that thing that's it's what i'm thinking time. and he was talking to they were talking to like the station when when everything went happened when everything happened and not it didn't affect anybody it also didn't affect the other as far as we know it didn't affect Ilya or any of the other astronauts on there but it yep. is that's why we it, but i think if i'm remembering back to the the original collision joe paul and joe with her ipad were all closest to the cow when it happened yep. so i were. think that's possibly what it was um because yeah. the cow when it was trick it was on it was starting to bring stuff in from different universes so it brought Adena's dead body and it which and it, all that stuff so i think that's what and because alice wasn't there physically but she was there like you know face with her you know with her Mm -hmm. face and her voice 
I think that's why she was affected. And then she's still up there. Yeah. So it's just, it's just technically it's just so weird. It's so trippy. <laughs> right. Cause the iPad is still there. Mm -hmm. iPad is still In there. In both with... realities. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. In both realities. <sighs> I, so maybe we do have an answer, but we had to dig deep. <laughs> See, this is why I would love yeah. to talk to um, the writers of this, because mm -hmm. this would have been a really good conversation to kind of talk to after the fact. I'm still, I'm still right. like for that. I don't like asking questions. I know. Like, hey, we need to <laughs> demand answers. <laughs> yeah, if you guys are seeing this, can we talk? Can we have a conversation? Like, we ain't got to talk about the second season. Let's just talk about the facts here. But, right. um <laughs> So getting back to Alice, um, this is where it starts getting really meaty because Alice, you know, she kind of like she normally does. And I was like, why is this little girl about to lock herself in there? Sure enough, she locked herself in and, you know, the mom was trying to get to her and they were trying to figure out. And all of a sudden, like, she's going back and forth. And I was mm -hmm. like, what the heck is happening? And then unfortunately, you know, that's when we realized that, that Joe that we know from the first episode got her out. But this happened again. She went back into the same exact space. But this time, both of the Alice's are there. And so they pick up the little record player. And they're playing it. And she was like, one, I can't remember which Alice was the one that thought of it. I feel like it was the Alice's of Joe's universe that clicked in. It's like, can you hear me? Or something like that. Um, and, I think it was the blue beanied one, which is okay, so that's the one person. with the yeah i think it was the blue beanie one that first did it yeah and they started to interact with each other and then not just interact they started to talk to each other through the mirrors and it was mm -hmm. it was so interesting because that was another puzzle piece that we didn't understand or comprehend from henry and bud like how are henry and bud communicating but it's happening um so i mm -hmm. think it's just with time they're slowly starting to unpack it but it was such a dope sci-fi moment um mm -hmm. because it felt like i don't know it felt really haunting i don't know this this episode seven felt really haunting especially by the end of it because the yeah. end shot with alice kind of like waking up and making it and all of a sudden she's like talking to um what's the woman's name god well yeah yeah and it's just a dead body. And I was like, mm -hmm. that is freaking creepy. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But just the Alice's conversation. And then I think it was so cool of um, the Magnus that I love coming and meet his daughter. <laughs> and then Joe, you know, meeting uh, the daughter of this universe and then listening and hearing it. I don't know. What, would you, what were your thoughts on that? I thought it was a really done scene. I thought it was cool. Yeah, no, it was it was brilliantly done. Like I said, Alice is um, both the girls that play the Alice's are really good. Um, I think that they did a great job of building the tension and communication. I'm like, oh my god, this is crazy, especially with the fire jump coming in. I thought that it was just a really cool way to play off of, especially because like, they cast a twin, so it's a really good good way to use twins in the storyline. Um, and I think them talking, I think. Alice figuring things out throughout the entire episode. She's so smart. I think she was starting to come with that first moment where she was like, you're not my mom, are you? Whatever. I think she was starting to realize that she definitely lost her mom, her mom. and like yeah. communicating with the Alice who thought she lost her mom, but didn't. I think she was starting to figure things out and starting to like, it was really cool to see her kind of come to terms with the, the what, what actually was going on. Um, yeah. And I love that she just she just accepted it. She was just like, "Yep, this is this is what's happening." And um, both of them heard, like when they were looking for the girls, both Magnus and both Magnus widowed Magnus and um, or not widowed Magnus. I don't know. Yeah, he's nice still Magnus, the one you like, the nice Magnus yeah. you like, and yeah. Joe were both looking for them and they could both hear the recording. So they could both hear. And then later on, he sees Joe. So he at least get, he knows, he knows in the back of his mind that like, he knows what he heard and what he saw. So he knows that there's something going on, but he can't for his own sanity. He needs to just keep it moving. So I, I, I really liked that, that scene where it was like, 
the hallways and it was especially clever to you know set a fire because obviously it was carelessness but because it actually sh it helped split the it sh showcased the difference in their scenes because at first it was just one snowy scene swapped with another snowy scene and the only mm -hmm. difference is a cat and a dead cat a live cat dead cat and then when the fire happened i was like okay now i'm it's, it was a little, a little bit easier to keep track of where things were but i swear it felt like there was like because we saw the recorder burned down and then we see them the recorder again there was there were so many little things that i was like what is going oh, on so yeah so this that's that's where it gets really interesting because we technically in this episode see three different cabins there's three there's one that's got a gaster and dead cat there's another one that's like got a painting in opposite positions and then you got another one where the other uh alice went to and found so the weird thing about the one that's in the middle is that I think Alice went initially going into the burning building and then she ended up in the middle one. And we don't know how or why, but we know it occupies both sets of spaces because we saw the cat interacting with the dead cat. And I was like, what the mm -hmm. heck is going on? <laughs> so I think, I think because remember the cabins by a lake, it's just frozen mm -hmm. over. And because that lady explained like the crazy sip with of the siblings that like the conspiracy siblings, they said they had you have to like because they took them out into the middle of the lake to hear the recordings. Bodies of water is similar mm -hmm. to large bodies of water is similar to space. Just, you have to get into an empty space. So I wonder and if it's stronger, that connection was stronger by the cabin because it was by that lake, which by the way was a red herring. The whole other season, I was like, someone's falling through that ice. <laughs> Right. No. Yeah. We we were absolutely thinking. Yeah. But I mean, it. But I think that's why. Angry, it was, it was <laughs> yeah, it did. I was like, oh my god. But I think that's why. I think because I think they were able to get into that in between place stronger because they were by the frozen lake, which is falls into that theory that you can you can hear things stronger from two. I guess two things can exist in one place around large bodies of water or like you know yeah. those type of things. Yeah, and, and I think that that lines up and tracks because when, I forget what happened, initially when Joe went out and like she was driving to go and get to her daughter and she was listening to, um, she picked up the, the recorder that was from the middle cabin and she walked away with it because Alice wasn't there. Like her Alice wasn't there, and then the other Alice wasn't there, but she picked up the recorder and darted off. But she's still hearing them still right. have a conversation going on at the same exact time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, either one, this is forward in time, or two, like this is a whole different existence and plane of existence. And I think that it's absolutely a different plane of existence because I think the dead cat is a metaphor. I really is. I, I think that the fact that it's a dead cat, that everything just seems corroded. Whereas the other two were a little more run down. It's, it's just so weird because when she drove off, she thought she was going in the right direction towards the cabin. And then she went back and was like, crap, I got to go back because that's the right cabin. And so she left out of one that she initially thought was the right one. And then she goes back into the same exact cabin that's burning and gets back in the same exact place. Um, mm -hmm. Thankfully... Um, well, now Henry didn't really save the day, but <laughs> <laughs> he just dropped that little girl in the snow. <laughs> well, you no, Bud, Bud, Bud did. Bud Henry, did. Yeah, Bud sucks. <laughs> yeah, but this is the interesting thing. Henry did initially go towards, like he, he kind of picked up the cow and then he looked towards the cabin and he started walking towards it, and that's when he switched into Bud. So I think he had the inclination to go towards the fire, but Either way, he swapped no, he by switched, then. No, he swapped. Oh, he'd already he switched, switched by that time. Yeah, he swapped. He swapped. Uh, swapped. <laughs> he switched in when the fire happened when the gunshot. He that's when he swapped, and then he oh. then that's when Joe came running out and was like, "Here, take her, go." And he was like, yeah. "What?" And he left because Henry was going in to help. Yeah, and then Bud took the girl and left, and he and then he was like, looked at her and was like, "Who the fuck are you?" And dropped her in the snow, yeah. and then found the cow and destroyed it. That's what happened. Yeah. He like they swapped it when he went when Henry went to go help. Yeah. 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 Um I the thing that I don't remember is how did Magnus get the other Alice out? How did she get out of the locked cabin? 
Cause she was freezing, remember? She just she just she just appeared next to her. I think she she wasn't locked in. The other girl was. I thought they both were locked in. I thought they locked themselves in. Mm-mm. Only one girl was like, "Okay, I've locked us in," and the other girl wasn't locked in because she just appeared next to her when she was trying to get her to breathe. She just she was just walked out. <laughs> she was like, "Hey, what's up?" Yeah, because yeah, she, she kept saying, "I'm cold, I'm cold, I'm cold." In. That's really weird. Oh wait, no, her dad yeah. did get her out. Remember, he opened the door. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. That was the first time. This is getting confusing because there was a couple right. of times. This girl's always in the damn cabinet. This girl's always in the cabinet. Um, so the time when the, when the when the actual fire happened, we did not see. I don't believe we saw non breathing. We saw breathing Alice. We never saw her leave the the, the cabinet. We only right, saw we Joe. But we then we next time we saw her, we just saw her appear next to her. So I assume she was right left out. <laughs> I don't know. Well, anyway, so long story <laughs> short, fast forward to that moment. Um, she makes it out. The Alice that we know had gotten out by Joe because the only reason why Joe went back in was to go and to try to her, get, yeah. mm-hmm. get the other Alice out of the locked cabinet. And she, she just got out. Either mm-hmm. way, it was a very intimate and important moment because it was a choice that Joe had to make. Like basically, yeah. the Alice, she knows it's her daughter is sitting right there, and she's like, "Mommy, I'm right here. Mommy, I'm here." She's like, "I see you, but I have to save this Alice." And so she's mm-hmm. accepting both as her daughter. And I thought that that was a really right touching moment because basically she's saying, "I'm sacrificing the idea of you because I need to make sure she's okay." And like she, because she could have honestly, I wonder if she would have touched the other Alice. If she would have stayed that's, with her, that's what I was thinking. I was considering that. I was wondering if she had held her hand and she'd walked with her, would she have stayed in that in that universe? And I feel like that was something she was considering. But then she was like, "I cannot let this girl die. <laughs> like, right. I can't." You know. Yeah. And the timing would have been perfect because the dad was coming up. Because the dad had saw them. Like dad physically mm-hmm. saw both of them there. Mm-hmm. And um, but she made the choice of doing CPR and trying to keep Alice alive. And thankfully, God, mm-hmm. Alice here didn't die from so- smoke inhalation. Um, right. Because I, I just really didn't know how this was going to turn out. And the sad thing about it is her douchebag husband's like, what have you done? <laughs> yeah. And just like, yeah, lock her butt up and like, get my daughter away from her. It's, it's, Anyway, long story short, <laughs> Alice goes, I hate that. I hate that freaking douchebag. And I think this is the good thing I'll say about the freaking uh, cast and the way that they directed this, because I could always distinguish who's who. There was never a moment I yeah. could, like, sometimes Bud and Henry, but once I understood who Bud was, I could always yeah. know who the Henry was. But um, mm-hmm. so I think it's just and really Alice good. Gave us a- Alice gave us our first kind of clue or slash confirmation as to our like the theory that we had like early on because when she was giving her CPR she was like um, I can't hear her I can't or I can't feel anymore I think she's dead and that is interesting because that means mm-hmm. that Alice the both Alice's can feel each other mm-hmm. and that, which means that Caldera is Bud and Henry can probably can feel each other and I'm wondering what that means for the the ones who whose counterparts are dead, can they still feel, they can't feel yeah. them, you know? I mean, they can't feel them. So that's great. Like that, that like opens up a lot of implications because if they are, when are they sleep? Like is, is uh, no, we'll talk about that later. But that I think was our first <laughs> clue when she said that I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that is a, a huge segue for the last few minutes of episode eight and in a very key moment as well. Uh, with the Russian astronaut um, or cosmonaut. Mm -hmm. Um, But long story short, Alice does survive and Joe is taken to a sane asylum. Or I don't know if it's a sane asylum. They put her in a compromising (laughs) situation. (laughs) But Alice kind of wakes up, um, you know, from smoke inhalation and everything. And the dad was like, don't worry, it's okay. Like, I'm protecting you. Your mom is away. I'm sorry she did this to you. And before she could even say anything, she kind of looks to the side and she sees the cosmonaut, the dead version, just like just talking to her audibly. 
And I can't remember exactly what she said, but the last thing I do remember is like, you know, come see me. I got your mom. <laughs> come, come to me. And I was like, no, that was a creepy freaking way to end this. That's why I said this. The show threads on the line of horror thriller mm -hmm. at times. Uh, was it too much for you? Like, <laughs> no. well, even, I mean, it could get later, a little but... bit. It, yeah, it gets a little like the dead body stuff. I'm this is why I don't like zombies. I just don't like the visual of rotting bodies like at all. Like it's gross. Um, I don't like dead bodies. I don't like murdered gore. I don't like any of that shit. But this is it's fine because they do they they don't. It's not like so much, you know, or it's like in your face, but it's just, they use it enough where it's creepy. Um, it's like, a, yeah, it's got a little bit of that sci fi horror, like the Valia nightmare. The fact that she's been having nightmares even before she, her mom ever told her about it, which means Valia's been visiting her dreams before. Like, why? Why are these people? Because, you know, if our theory is correct and they're connected by the, like, the iPad being up there and whatever is going on, it, shout out to Apple TV because they will throw their products in a, in a t in their TV shows. And now I'm talking about it because it's a plot point. <laughs> it is absolutely a plot point. <laughs> it's a plot point. It's been a steady plot point this entire season of the iPad. <laughs> but I, that's, it just, there's so many. It, even with this ending, this eight episode season, which I think was a decent amount of episodes, I wish we would have gotten like maybe two more episodes. But um, I, I really, every time I'm like, oh, I figured this out, and then I'm like, it, it ends up giving me three thousand more questions because I'm like, ah, oh, Valia was visiting her in her dreams before, but right. why? Like, right. I have so many questions. <laughs> like, what the but hell yeah. is going on? Um, yeah. But yeah, like I said, we're we're treating this like a, a two-parter. So we're gonna go ahead and transition over to the next episode. Next episode starts opening up, and it's all hell breaking loose because your girl Joe is going through it. So Joe is basically getting electroshock therapy done to her. <sighs> um while I think at that point, Bud wakes up next to the cow that he had took in, and he is about to go ham on it like it's Amityville horror. Um, and it's interesting because at the same exact time that she's getting shocked, um, he is destroying it. And now my thing is when he did that, I was worried that the thread of existence is going to start to disrupt because he's just destroying it while she's occupying a different space. Um, but it's just, it was a really strong opener because I was like, this is so messed up and sad. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing about it, from an ethical standpoint, I keep forgetting the astronaut's name. What's her name? Um, Arena? Joe. Yeah. Joe. Which one? Joe. Arena. Um, okay. She, in a lot of different ways for me, my perspective, she's the villain of this. She knows full well what Joe's going through, but she wants to keep Joe quiet. That's why I said that Henry was complacent in the sense that him and her knew kind of what's been going on but they've been kind of keeping it to themselves so it's not drawing too much attention and in this episode joe gave arena all the business she didn't even care like joe could not hold it in at all like she was like this is this this is this this is this but throughout the whole entire time i was like you are putting this woman through all this knowing full well what she's actually going through to try to make sure the perception is that she's crazy and you're just rehabilitating her. You try to discredit her in the beginning. You brought her down to this point, knowing full well that these drugs are not going to be safe and they are antipsychotics to put her down this mm -hmm. road to where you got to get her all to get her to this point. The thing that I want to bring in, I know I'm jumping ahead, but when Joe goes upstairs and makes it out and she sees the astronaut, the first person that made it on the moon, right? We saw two different people. Now, so does she. The thing about it, my theory is that in both planes of existence, this man is both up there. And mm -hmm. I think Joe sees both at the same exact time. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how she could see both of them there at the same exact time. And I don't know if they could see each other at the same exact time. But it was because initially I was like, is this supposed to be a, her baby? Is this supposed to be like <laughs> her future of this kid? Like, but now it makes a lot more sense that she can see both things existing at the same time. Not just that. When you look at her, um, her, scan, her scan of her belly, like we're finally seeing the two. 
Um, mm -hmm. And it's actual substantial proof. So if Henry was there, he'd be able to substantiate like the, the claims that he had been making. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know. How did you think about how they rounded out like those specific threads? One with the re revelation of the baby, her being pregnant and seeing what the CT scan said, but then also what's going on now with the multiverse standpoint? Yeah, I first of all, I was so mad because like you guys didn't test her for pregnancy before you gave her electroshock therapy. Like you guys are idiots. Like first and foremost, put her baby and her in danger, and it's so unethical. Like no one does that anymore. Um, but I always I thought it was such sweet, bittersweet irony that Bud has spent the entire, or I'm sorry, Henry has spent the entire season trying to get visual evidence of the the distortion of the anomaly saying it didn't want to be seen. I remember him saying that, mm -hmm. or someone saying, I think he said that. He drew it, he tried to take pictures of his phone. It was very, mm -hmm. like they focused a lot on that. And what actually ended up happening, how we actually get proof of it, and what sent Arena down her little path was it being on an ultrasound. Why an ultrasound? I don't know. What's different about an ultrasound versus a phone? It takes a, it's, those are intent, it's like radi, it's like a different type of radar. It's like a late, it gets in there. Also, if there's two different, since she's only four weeks pregnant, they, this is a, a thing that is, she's only four weeks pregnant. So, A, there shouldn't even, it's basically still a cluster of cells. No, there's no even no, no heartbeat. So they would have had to do a transvaginal ultrasound. A re in reality, to actually get any sort of imaging of anything, a transvaginal ultrasound would have been more technically uh, medically accurate, just a wand that goes inside. Um, but, and then ch checks the, the woman's uterus. Four weeks is way too early to see things. So the fact that they were able to see something on the little, like, just straight up is so interesting to me. It's, it, it, I, I'm curious as to why the ultrasound um, can't, like, things were able to capture the what the anomaly was. So and, and even if it was true, what Henry was saying was true, is that the anomaly doesn't want to be seen, which begs the, the question, is it sentient? Like that's a crazy thing to say, but that's a whole other can of worms. But the fact that it, something tripped it up, like how the fact that Joe from another universe had a sex with the magnets of this universe, and now they have a baby that, is of two universes. That's something that clearly has never happened before in the history of all this going on, the space madness that they've been covering up for what it sounds like decades because they have the first, the, the old guy we talked about that um, Sam mentioned was the first astronaut that ever went up into space according to Erna. That man has been in an insane asylum because he refuses to, uh, that's, they, say, they kept saying twice, they were like, if you don't accept this, if you don't get better, it will get worse. And they pointed upstairs. If mm -hmm. she didn't accept what was, just accept her life as is, it means that that man did not accept his life as is. He's existing. He refused to accept his life here. He, and that obviously got him uh, booked for life. Like he's gone. Um, he's just forgotten about, I guess. And that's just crazy to me. Like I thought it was all so well done and well um, thought out. I, I was really worried. Um, I didn't know where it was going to go. I was like, this is going to end really sad. Like, she's just going to be stuck in an insane asylum and everyone's not going to believe her and that everyone's just be sad and depressed and grieving. Like, it sucks. Right. Um, I'm glad yeah. it didn't end like that. Um, but I, there was a moment where I was like, this is, how is she going to get out of this? Because no right. one is on her side. Like, Irena's been covering yeah. this this up for decades. So right. I think those, the, see her seeing the ultrasound changed everything. Yeah. And not just that, her conversation with Bud. Yeah. And... What um what Joe said to her when she was quoting <laughs> there's a lot of things I think Arena had spent so long um in delusion like hi living in her in this reality that that she, like hiding from everything building like this like house of cards defense and in a day or two it just kept falling down because Joe was quoting her own her dead versions like uh last words at her you know yep. how insane that is and then. Her, the, she tries to seek comfort in homeboy, and he's like, <laughs> I'm not <Nope>. sure, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then she sees the ultrasound, and she's like, Okay. And like, I think that that was, she is the villain. I agree with you. But mm -hmm. I think she, 
by the end of the episode, I think she's taking steps to, I don't know, maybe try to, rem- I don't know if she's trying to remedy that or she's trying to, but I do think that that all those three things that happening um, made her rethink. I mean, her, the, the jig is up. Like it's yeah. over. You can't, um, because you have a wild card out there now. You could, could she could control Joe and she can control that man up there in, up in the stairs, but she can't control Buck Caldera. Oh, no, you better he's kill just, that man. Right. <laughs> well, he's running loose in someone else's body. Like he knows the game. He knows how to he knows how to sidestep her. Like so if we do get a second season, we're I feel like we're gonna see a lot more of that craziness too. Um but yeah, I think it's just a really like this episode fantastic. Like really, really yeah. good. Really, really good. Yeah, random side question before I comment on something do you think bud killed that guy to set henry up for the fall yeah this is all like it was no something he reason. said in the beginning um it's like when i get over there I'm mm-hmm. gonna have things. <laughs> I, was just yeah, like, I agree i think he did because I, I remember we were both confused at first and i thought we were like oh maybe henry swap and killed him and it wasn't but we were so confused but at that point we didn't know who either of them were really and right. then we got a really a much better idea who bud was um, later on, but I definitely do think now looking back on it, he set he methodically set Henry up like he set him up because he knew he he I think he knew there he knew there was the existence of the cow he knew he, um Bud was like I think he was able to he think he was just able to figure it out all and all the times he swapped with him um he mm-hmm. was able to figure out how to do it permanently um yeah. Because Henry and I, it, uh, maybe there is another cow that exists, or Henry's gonna have to build one in prison. I don't know. Um, out of some deodorant and some toothbrushes, but yeah, I, yeah. I do think, yeah, I do think he did that to set him up. Now that I'm looking back on it, which I think I'm gonna rewatch it when the show goes is actually on. Yeah, know. it was something he said. He was like, he's gonna have to deal with all my addictions, all my problems, and everything else, and he's gonna have to just live with it. And I was just like, oh, that's. That's intent. <laughs> you, mm-hmm. you, you, you he has hated that man for years, and I can yeah. understand. Like they, like think about it. They went up in space. What, like when they were in their mid twenties, late twenties, mm-hmm. something happens, and their lives are switched for mm-hmm. decades. And then he develops a, anger problems, drinking problems, while the other guy is taking pictures with Reagan and Muhammad Ali and getting a Nobel Peace Prize, like. And they are aware of it. The fact that's the thing, like all these they years, it seems like right. he, they both know. <laughs> so yeah. I, of course that would piss you off and make you angry and turn you crazy and turn you into a serial killer. Like right. the man is, I, I get, I not, I don't like Bud, but I completely understand him. If that happened to me, I don't know how I would respond, but it's such a wild situation to find yourself in a world, a, a life that's slightly different than your own. Oh, you don't have a black mm-hmm. car. You've always had a white one. What? Oh, right. your daughter has green hair or blonde hair, not black hair. What? What are you talking <laughs> about? Like that's wild. Like you know what I mean. So I just I get Bud's anger. Like I do. Yeah, and then also like his ability to do destructive things because he could care less about a universe that ain't actually his. Like why I killed this person? Who cares? That's not my that's not my version. Who cares? <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I shout out to that actor because he. Him and the actresses that play the role of Alice, they were the showstoppers. Like they, yeah, they elevated this on so many different levels, and it's just ironic that they're both the ones that are going and swapping back and forth on a continuous basis. But um, harping back to the ultrasound, I, I just wanted to state that I think. <sighs> When Alice asked her mom about it in the episode eight, um, mm-hmm. like, okay, you're here, we're here, but you're not supposed to be here, but where does the baby exist? And I was like, Middle space. right, <laughs> like, it's not supposed to exist, period. And, mm-hmm. and the thing about it, like, Anytime something occupies space that's not supposed to be there, there's a ripple effect that happens. Now, I'm not saying that Joe's going to die from a pregnancy or something crazy like that, but I do think that it's going to be a ripple effect that's going to happen as far as their mm-hmm. reality that they're in. It's go- I, and I think mm-hmm. it's... Go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I think it's going to cause a collision because it's yeah. already starting. There must have been somewhere, shape, or form, a rip tear 
crinkle wrinkle in time that started folding these realities together and it's happening more frequently and it happens every time they go up into space and then this dummy made a machine this genius dummy made a machine that it amplifies it somehow mm-hmm. and like all of this is accelerating and now someone is pregnant and like seems seemingly has never happened before because i assume right. like but that's a thing so that's why I said that I thought that Elena was doing, like she was making that email to draw people in to see if anybody else has dealt with something that just like, oh, have, have you experienced anything like this? So she can kind of yeah. cross off the list. Like maybe somebody might have gotten pregnant. Let me go and check them. Let me check. Yeah. May, well, that's the thing. Like I, I think her even opening up that can of worms because she knows that like, She's like, okay, well, I can't hide anymore, so I need more information now. So I think you might be right. It's probably just a informa- information gathering, but also to see if anyone else had gone pregnant or if anyone else has gone through this. Because um, a lot of astronauts have gone up to space, and they don't they don't keep track of every single one of them that come back. Yeah. Like they don't all belong to their programs. So I think right. that that's an interesting. That is interesting. I think that that's something that um, I guess we'll find out if we get a second season. Because where does that baby? Ex- where does that baby belong? Where does the fetus belong? You know what I mean? Um, well, we well, talked about the three cabins and that middle space. Does that where will it all will that baby always be able to connect to two realities? So that's that's the, that's the thing that I was going to say is that when the baby, Lord Jesus, if when and if the baby everything and like say the baby's like five years old and the baby just starts to walk and all of a sudden she bleeds and she or he bleeds into another reality. What do we do with that? Because if but that's if, the thing, do they? Who's we still don't? Are they're swapping mentally? They're not swapping bodies. True, true, true. So there is there technically is only one of him ever, or one of this baby ever, right? So yeah. theoretically, in this <laughs> in the story, everyone has an as a as an opposite, right? Or has a stop du- or a duplicate, right? Yeah. Whether they're alive or not, this baby won't ever have like it, this baby will just exist like will be its only the only one of its kind. Well, we both presumably, said, I said the baby was a girl, and you said the baby was a boy. <laughs> I think it's a boy. I think it's a boy because we have enough I girls. Said Alice said a girl. I said a girl. <laughs> I know. And I said he, and I was like, no. <laughs> we think it. I think it's a boy. I'm team boy. <laughs> but no I, I. I <laughs> I genuinely, I'm genuinely curious, like where this baby, and also you mentioned a cat alive, a cat dead. It's like a very Schrodinger's cat. Um, I feel like that was like a nod to Schrodinger's cat, you know? Um, if you guys don't know what Schrodinger's cat, it's the uh, the theory of the open, like if you open a box, if there's a cat in a box, is it dead or alive? You you won't, it could be both dead and alive if you don't, and if you never open the box to find out. So I don't know if that has anything to do with the story there's also like there were also changeling um references throughout the entire show um which is a story about um a baby being swapped out with a monster or, or like a duplicate of itself there's a lot of a lot of um references to stories and things that um reference duplicates or duplicators or swaps or switches which i think is interesting for this show because what the hell is going on you know why? You know, the the weird thing is, I literally was talking about this cat, <laughs> literally, in another review just yesterday <laughs> about a certain dead show. That's all I'm going to say. Um, oh. So, Boom. so interesting that you brought that up. But yeah. Anyway. It's so, popular theory. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> Joe goes through a lot in this episode. Like she is continuously <laughs> hounded and just probed, and like she's literally suffering mentally, um, going through all of this because one, she went through electroshock therapy. Then two, she's dealing with the shock of understanding that she may be stuck there for life. Um, mm-hmm. one of her co-pilot uh, astronaut comes by, he basically lets her know, and she's not getting it. Like she's she. she she is not backing down from what she's actually knowing is actually her reality. She can't accept anything else, but he kind of went in there and I'm wondering if Ariana had a conversation with him or if he found out, I feel like he found out about what was upstairs because he kept looking up and telling her Mm -hmm. like, 
Yeah. And he was looking he was, re- he was before the last time we saw him, he was researching stuff for her. So it's possible he did find out. Yeah. And, and then Arena think- found him to talk to him. Yeah. Right. And I think that he was trying to get her to get hip that like you're gonna have to accept this or they're gonna mm-hmm. continue to make you suffer. And Joe got really defensive. And every single time I was like, you cannot touch trust any of these people, like just play the game and joe she was frustrating me because i was like i get you're trying to hold on to your understanding of what's happening for your sanity's sake but at the point that you realize that these people are going to just keep you here just Mm -hmm. play the game and it was just so sad and nomi just demolished every scene she was in so emotional so many different facets to how she took on the performance of joe throughout this season but this is more of a defining moment for joe because she had to reconcile with a lot of different things the biggest Mm -hmm. thing i think and i know we're going to want to talk about it is her acceptance just like the girls did the girls Mm -hmm. in their own way were like look like i accept that you have my mommy but at least you have my mommy and she is right and the other alice is like my mommy is gone but at least your mommy is here and it's gonna be And it was kind of like for Joe and Ariana kind of said it like in so many words in her own way. I think she still was trying to twist her arm to keep her to shut up. But she did blatantly say like, look, at least you have an Alice here. At least you have a family here and a semblance of a life. Like, so she admitted without admitting like, you're right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But there's nothing you can do about it. You can't do anything about it. Yeah. You can't go back. Well, Mm -hmm. For what we know, I have a theory yeah. that you can, but we'll get we'll get there in a second. Um, but yeah, what, what was your kind of thought on Nomi's performance and then Joe's final moments in this last episode? She's excellent. I always thought she was an excellent actor. Like I think she did so good um, portraying all the different like stages of grief because she really had to go through that. Like she's grief. She had to grieve her more life. She lost her daughter and her husband. Um, she has to now accept this new family as her own and it'll always feel weird and it'll always feel different. Um, but at least they're, they're, I mean, at least it's an Alice and at least it's a Magnus, you know what I mean? So I, it's, it, it's, it was beautiful to see her come to that really sad acceptance. And even that, in my head, I was like, this can't be how it is. What? Um, right. Because it's still sad. Like at the end of the day, um, it's still sad. Like one, a little, both little girls lost their moms. At the end of the day, like they both lost their moms. Um, yeah. One's just trapped in another reality, and she gets, and then the other one gets to like have a facsimile of her mom, but it's not the same. And maybe you know, in a couple of years, maybe in a ten years, it won't matter because they'll be living their not lives normally, you know, or they won't. I don't know. But I mean, um, the kid. <laughs> depends, right? Because we have a new, we have a new variable that's never we that hasn't no one's experienced like before coming in so i i thought that was wonderful i think it, the last conversation that nomi had or i'm sorry joe had with um, <laughs> alice i thought was really sweet um that alice had with herself was really sweet alice is a smart kid alice is a really smart kid she figures stuff out really quickly and she accepted things qu- way quicker than the adults did like alice yeah. and joe were both on their path of acceptance and alice got there a lot sooner than joe I think it's just because joke kids are more excite uh, more accepting and can easily accept things um, more than adults can. Adults yeah. adults resist things a lot more. Um, we always think we can change things when even when we can't. Mm-hmm. And um, right, and I think that that was a really well done contrast between both Joe and Alice. Um, and it was such an honest, refreshing conversation between the two of them. Like, your Joe, your Al- like my mom, your Joe, like or your Alice, whatever. It was really sweet to hear them having that refreshing conversation. And even Joe asking Magnus, like, do I seem like your Joe? And him being very honest, like, no. Like, yeah. so I think that that's a good way for them to start their life. Like, if they are going to stay together and try this out, it's at least a good way for them to start from there. He did, she doesn't seem like his Joe, and he can't. He knows in the back of his mind that that's not yeah. his Joe. He yeah. knows. I think he knows. I think he knows. Um, but he, he, that's just, that's not, that doesn't make sense. So it's got to go. I just want my normal life back, you know? And yeah. I think that that was all, I think all of them having coming to that acceptance was interesting. Um, 
so yeah, I, and and then Ilya, I think I, I think it was well done, even though I was I was confused in a, by the like, oh, it'll get worse. And I was like, what are you guys talking about? And then when we actually see like her going upstairs and seeing like, okay, that obviously scared her straight, got her into got her, you know, finally talking to her and I like, okay, for real, for real. Right. And I was like, it doesn't matter because you can't change it. And that is such a hard thing to hear and to accept. It doesn't matter because you can't change it. Like, right. And so I thought that yeah. she had to hear it, like it had to happen. And now reality is catching up too quick. You got a baby going in you, you know? So that is, yeah. I, yeah, I thought it was just, all of it was well acted. There was not a single bad actor in the entire show. Everything was one well done. Yeah. So speaking of actors, we got to talk about Paul. <laughs> oh, so, oh, Paul, you know, last time we saw Paul, Paul saw the other Alice while he was half drunk, just pop out like a daisy. And it freaked him out because he's like, why are there two Alice's? <laughs> and then, you know, he goes and meets up with Bud. Bud, we find out in episode seven, absolutely did shoot him. But thankfully, Henry came back to help him and try to keep him alive. And so he kept him alive long enough for um, Paul to go to the hospital. Now, Henry is pretty much screwed. He's going up the river. He's going to the creek, um, unfortunately, (laughs) because he went through the polygraph. He went through everything. But one of the things, he is smart. But just like the calculations that were incorrect with the mission, he was off by one specific thing, the DNA. He was so Mm -hmm. sure that from a DNA standpoint that that thread would make and assure his innocence. But we know as the audience, it's their minds, their bodies. Mm -hmm. When we we saw Joe going and playing the piano, I'm like, oh, this is muscle memory. Like her body Mm -hmm. is interpreting what's going on, but her mind has no recollection of it. So it just makes it look like you're crazy, which is why they can't justify their existence. No way. There's no proof of their true existence because it's in their mind. Like, I mean, you can maybe go and do a CT scan on somebody's brain waves and have them check if they if she was able to go and swap back and forth to show two different versions of herself, maybe the scans on her brain waves would be different, but that could be from shock. So there's right. still no way to 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 prove anything. Um mm-hmm. but all that to say, uh, we get back to Paul and he's waking up and he wakes up and was like, What did he say? I'm sorry, I we we paused it. And he literally said, like, "I've seen it. something. I've seen something." Right. So we got to talk about that craziness because we know that from the moment he got shot, like he could have died temporarily, and we know that Alice did die temporarily because the other Alice identified she was no longer there. Now, when he said that he saw something, where did he go? Mm-hmm. At the current time, we know his body that you know had an arm cut off, and I think the body was brought back and it was put in the ground. I don't know if it was ashes or if it was just put in the ground. So it's it's buried. Well, he's looking up and he's looking for his arm. And the only thing it brought me back to was the first episode where she kept flopping, going back and forth, and almost like she saw mm-hmm. herself in somewhere else. And she mm-hmm. was one time she was like this, and other times it was like she felt like she wasn't where she was supposed to be. And my theory, and I think I know where you're gonna go with it, is that Paul went back to the other body. And what that means is he in purgatory, a plane of existence that doesn't exist, or what happened? We don't know, but we know at the end of the episode, <laughs> we see Joe's body. And Joe's body is actually moving. Her eye is actually moving around. <laughs> and so... When she grabbed the iPod. She, she absolutely grabbed that freaking iPad. And I said it. I was like, if it ain't a freaking ghost, them bodies are the only reason why they got off of that ISIS. Like, they, somebody pushed the button to get them off. And I was like, when it was his episode, I was like... I feel like Joe did that. I feel like Joe is the one that got him off. 
that they see. And it was just like, what the freak is happening? So, yeah. What's what's your thoughts? <laughs> all right. Weird side of all this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was kind of a twist that we was revealed um, that Henry didn't realize that it was meant they were mentally swapping, not physically swapping. So I thought that was an interesting, it was like a gut punch to him. I was like, oh shit, he didn't know that. So that's wild. Um, then we get the scene where Paul's like looking at himself and I'm like, wait a minute, where's he been? Wait, what? I don't know. My theory is that, I think we talked about this, is that these people, some of these people are tethered together to their other counterparts, whether they're alive or not. Which is why Bud and Henry can swap um, mentally, and why Alice, both Alice's, were able to communicate and swap realities. Mm-hmm. And I, and because of what was been going on with Irena and the Valia, I was wondering if that was happening with dead, with the an alive counterpart and a dead counterpart, because we see in one of the past scenes Henry saw the like the dead Balia or the dead Arena. And then we, um, and then she's also been haunting Alice's dreams, apparently. And talking. Are these, and talking to her and telling her where to find her mother. So mm-hmm. my theory is there, this anomaly is tethering these people. There's something tethering them together, whether it's their souls, their brains, something is tethering them together. So when they're, it's either if they're passed out or if they're sleeping, they're, maybe they're, their other person can swap into their reality, like mm-hmm. in mentally, because up until that point, we saw Paul, he was in a coma because he had just been shot. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if somehow the, like other Paul woke up in his body and the other Lancaster is just chilling in a dead body right now. Cause That's he's exactly in a coma. What I was that's exactly Which what is I was crazy. Thinking. Right. And I'm just like, so now I'm thinking if that's a if that's true, then the uh, the dead cosmonaut crashing into the ship was that on purpose? What the fuck? Was that on purpose? <laughs> because if they have agency, how would that have happened? Why did the body right. just randomly so it's I not was, a coincidence, like, right, time, right, right, right. Exactly. So why did that body just do that? If if we if our theory is correct, because like we literally see Joe, we we go the last scene is them going up. We hear the video from the first scene of the last of the episode eight, and it's the last scene of the episode eight. Where we're up in the space station, and we hear Joe's message to Alice saying, "I'm always with you. I'm, you're my heart, my soul. I will always be with you, no matter where I am." Which is a haunting thing to say as we see the dead Joe, we finally see dead Joe, the first time we've actually seen her um, since mm-hmm. her accident, floating there. And I was like, oh, mm, gross. Cause we start to see her injury, it her lack of wrong. eye and part part of her head. Um, some of that had floated off into space. Um, and then as the iPad's floating towards her, she fucking, her arm moves and grabs it. And then her eye kind of goes and zeroes right into. <laughs> yeah, her, her eye focuses on the camera, like looks at, like breaks the fourth wall. It's so creepy. I literally was like, yeah. "What?" And I was like, "This better not be the way the episode ends." And of course, <laughs> I I don't know. Like my my theory is like, is what we, what it just like somehow something is the anomaly is tethering them together. I don't know how. We don't have any answers. We don't know why this started. We don't know. Who how it happened, we don't know who knows or how many people it happened to. But something is why and I think Bud's or Henry's cow amplified and made it worse. <laughs> so I yeah. will say he's to blame for that. Because I think I think what was happening before the cow, it was just happening to one person every time they sent up to but what it seems like on on average, every time they sent some a team up there, one person would come back swapped. But now mm-hmm. with the cow it affected three people at once. Right. And yeah. and, and now and that wasn't even physically there. <laughs> it wasn't even there. How is that even possible? Right. <laughs> yeah. This is insane. The show is insane. Yeah, I yeah. I absolutely think that 
the person just as long as there is a living entity or body that even the dead one is going to be able to still exist now the creepy thing about this is if that's the case where's the consciousness of the dead counterpart there is none that's the thing there's it's got to be somewhere because they're shifting in and out because okay, I'll, I'll, I'll phrase. Oh, it like you're this. right. You're right because episode, yeah, because we, um, he, you're right. We he does swap, so maybe they're just maybe, but they might be just being purgatory, like uh, Valia. Right. right. Is just kind of floating there, so I'm wondering yeah. if they just are just floating in some sort of middle area until they get access to like, and it only happens when the other person is unconscious. You know what right. I mean? Like I don't because we you were right like when. I think it's, they instead of one of them helping the other, they definitely swapped. They like blacked out and helped they their other bodies help. I don't know, maybe I don't know. Because <laughs> because you got to remember when remember when um, Joe went to um, Paul's grave, right? And then they yeah. saw each other, but then she also heard like after he saw her and she saw her, he said something to Joe. The Joe that we, the, sorry, the Paul that we saw never said anything to this version of Joe. And so I was like, who's having this conversation? Because it the way that she interpreted it, it was almost like Joe, like, da, 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 da. I can't remember exactly the words. I had to go back and watch the show again. Yeah. My, either way, I feel like the other version that died is still in a plane of existence somewhere. Mentally. Yeah, like a purgatory, limbo, something like that. Yeah. They just don't have a body to access. Or so I thought. Because that during Joe, <laughs> she's not alive. There's no way. There's no she's not she's not been eating. She's she's no, she's not alive. She's that is a zombie. We're about to watch a zombie show. Cool. <laughs> actually physically alive. Oh no, she's absolutely a zombie. She is a walking dead. <laughs> she is walking Ew, dead. Face um, zombies. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. But um, but yeah, no, it's it's so much smarter than that, man. This is such an amazing show. Um, my fear of this show is that people aren't watching it or aren't gonna watch it and really appreciate it because it's on a streaming service that people don't necessarily watch, um, for different reasons. And I I don't know how to get the word out, but I feel like if you're watching this now, um, you've rode the race and gotten to the finish line and you appreciate the amount of work that was put into it. I think that some people that mm-hmm. watched the first episode probably were very confused and they got to the third or second episode. It's like, I don't know if I want to continue this. It's worth it. You guys, I, we, we yeah. promise you it's, it really is I, worth it. Yeah. It's, but. Apple is really bad at promoting their TV shows. So we have to do it for them, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what, Apple? You heard that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Co-sign. Co-sign. <laughs> um, what do we rate uh episode seven and what do we rate episode eight? Seven, I would get a B, which is the first B of the season, only because it there was a lot of rehashing of like they had to marry they had to get us back to um get us to the present time, which I think took a little bit too long. Um but it was still a good episode overall. So I gave it a B. A, I give an A plus. Um, I think it did everything. I think it, like I, it did not go in the direction I was expecting. But if I feel satisfied enough while also being very intrigued, like I, I think we got a happy, like as happy of an ending as we're going to get for that family while also being like, but question mark i think that that's really a really strong and smart way to end a show that may or may not be getting a second season you know but it would be such a disservice if they don't continue this but then i know you know, stuff like that happens um yeah for me episode seven is like the super bowl the first half of it <laughs> second half after the halftime show it was kicking and it was like it went into overtime and it was like all right let's go <laughs> um, but I still, for, for that, I give it like an A minus. Um, I think that some of the some of the things they did with the with the Alice character and the creepiness of the back half of that episode were some of the best of the series. Um, mm-hmm. I, I really 
was in it. I was like, man, like it'd be really dope if, you know, Alice started interacting with her friend more and then she started kind of internalizing certain things that she's seen and she started investigating it. And then mm-hmm. some kind of way she started being able to cross talk, not just with that little cassette player, but something else. So the two Alice's start interacting. Like I could see this going somewhere. Um, yeah. And then it's centering around instead of Joe, it's centering around like her baby brother or her baby sister. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, episode A, A plus, absolutely. That was freaking dope. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. as a season, this is a, a good A. I agree. This yeah. is really good, man. It's, really it's an good. excellent show. Apple Apple TV always does it. Like I haven't had, I've only watched three total, but I have not watched a bad Apple show so far. <laughs> bad apple. <laughs> no fun. Bad me. apple. Um. <laughs> yeah, we gotta. Um. Anyway, we gotta go. It's it's late. Um. <laughs> Vanessa, you... where can everybody find your content? Plug it. Plug it. You can find me at Vanessa Shark on Twitter and Instagram, TikTok, Tumblr. I have a website, VanessaShark.com, which I have not updated this year. I need to do that. Um. It's been a busy year. Uh, and then multiverseofcolor.com. You can check out all my interviews. I just dropped one with Char Martin, bro, who is doing the new Red Hood, the Hill series. Check that out. And yeah, back to you. Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> and yeah, to add to her plug, she has now uploaded a playlist. So you can get a lot of her oh, yeah, visual yeah. content and episode reviews that are just specific to Vanessa to check out. And she'll probably put on VanessaShark.com as well. Anyway, so I'm helping out with the plug this time. Teamwork. Exactly. (laughs) Working together. We got it. Um, But yeah, (laughs) we got a lot more content coming and maybe possibly some samurai. (gasps) So yeah, we we ain't going to shogun y'all tonight. We're going to go. Bye, guys. Summertime line, ain't nothing on my